Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you what it is like a day in the life of a sports photographer. And today I'm back on the road for EFL League 2 action, Salford City versus Tramway Rovers. It's only about an hour from where I live, so it's not an early start. Um, however, it does still start with a coffee. So I'm gonna get a coffee, then we'll hit the road and we'll talk more when we get up to Manchester. So I've just arrived at Salford. We're about two hours out from kickoff, just after one o'clock here. So I'm gonna get out, uh, do some shots around the stadium. I've shot here three times before, I think maybe four. So uh, I know the drill in terms of getting in, so I'm not too worried about that. It's fairly simple, quite a small ground. So uh, yeah, entry is really quite straightforward. <music> So as far as gear was concerned for this game, my main body would once again be the Canon 1D Mark IV. On that, I had the 17-200mm f2.8 lens, the Mark II version. And my second body was the 80D. And on that, I had the 400mm f2.8 lens. You'll also see before the game, I was doing some wide angle shots. That is using the Canon EF 17-40mm f4 lens. If you've never shot at Salford before, uh, traffic is an absolute nightmare. So you've got to get here early, get some street parking, because um, it does get really, really busy uh, in the hour before kickoff. And then you've got to walk quite a steep hill. As I said, this is two hours out from kickoff, hence why it is not too busy at this point. This is the location of Salford City's Moor Lane ground. So as you can see, it's in a really residential area and that is what adds to the real chaotic nature of the parking when you get closer to kickoff. I say by 2.30, that main um, road just beneath the stadium there, Moor Lane, that is absolutely rammed with cars. And so I park just a little bit further along it, um, well placed to get away handy afterwards. Okay, so as I said, Salford is a pretty small ground, and so once you're in it around, well, just before half one in this case, it's a good opportunity just to try and look for some of those nicer wide-angle shots at the stadium, those general views that agencies and football clubs would like to get hold of before kickoff. There wasn't really many great angles of Salford's ground from outside, and so I tried a few experimental things, such as this weird little shot through the fence with the little lion emblem there in the metalwork. It didn't work great, but it's a real great chance for you if you arrive early to do some trial and error on shots that are um, worth taking a look at, worth evaluating to see if there's any value in them. And this game's a great example actually of shots where I tried quite a few that they just didn't work. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. You, you learn as a photographer um, by taking shots and practicing. If, you know, if there's shots you don't like, then you just don't use them. Uh, but it's better to try and experiment than not at all. Once I'm into the stadium here, it's just about, again, getting some of those wide-angle stadium shots. And as you'll see, these are used by clubs um, in the build-up to games. So on social media, a couple of hours out from kickoff, or an hour and a half, 90 minutes out from kickoff. This is great content for clubs to have, and, and I'll come to a little bit more in a minute. And that is because it kind of engages fans early on um, on the social media feeds. That gets them in the mood for the game, shows them the conditions of where the team's playing, if it's an away game. Um, so they're really handy just to get an agencies if you're working with them will always expect you for to come back with some wide angle shots of the stadium some general views as they're known or gvs get these in the bag as soon as you get there and then you know you've at least got something one thing that always amuses me shooting at some smaller grounds or well, not amuses me but interests me i guess is 
you can take shots in a stadium like Wembley Stadium, for example, and pretty much every angle will be interesting. Every angle will work because of the scale of the, the stands and the, the sheer, um, well, how iconic that venue is. When you go to stadiums that are a bit smaller like Salford, you've got to work a little bit harder. You've got to, you know, if you try the exact same shots you do at Wembley, you're going to get very different results that might not always add any kind of value or have any merit whatsoever. And so, um, as I said before, it's so much is about trial and error. This is always something I love, those first steps out onto pitch side. If you are in one of the grounds, it still allows you to be this side of the hoardings. There's a real buzz to be this close to where a football league game is about to take place. The goal nets are usually one of my first port of calls once I get through the hoardings. Um, depending on the stadium and the nets and the conditions, you can actually get some really cool shots sometimes of the of the goal nets, be it some rain hanging off the crossbar or the net, kind of uh, with the stadium, if the stands are big enough in the background, or just some wide shots of the net itself. Um, kind of looking through and focusing on the far end of the stadium. So again, at Salford here, I tried a few different types of shots, and then once I got them in the bag and looked on the laptop later on, um, kind of picked out the best ones. As you can see, we had some great weather for this game, and that is always nice early on in the season, when you do that, get those days that are nice and bright. And also a benefit of getting to the ground so early is, as you can hey, see here, there's... There's no stewards, there's no players warming up, there's nothing really to get in my way other than a couple of the photographers I knew at this game who'd always also got there earlier um, and that is about it. So it's so good getting there early and just getting a feel for the place and getting some early shots. In Hello, the back. how are you buddy? Excuse me, witching away to a photographer I know while taking these uh, shots no, but... Uh, but, uh, I was just trying some corner bro, flag bro, shots, which you. often work pretty Not well. Toby, Today they didn't, because this flag was just full of water from the sprinklers uh, and wouldn't be kind of mm, stand up to show know. me the, the club logo of Salford. Um, so it was a little bit wasted on this occasion. But the sprinklers and the How sunshine did well? allow me for some cool other shots. Another perk of getting to the ground early is you've got time to grab a little bit of lunch before work really begins. Okay, so normally in games that kick off at three o'clock, you can expect the team, certainly the away team, to arrive around about 1.30, maybe a little bit sooner. And what this does, as it did today, is give me an opportunity to get some shots of the team either arriving and getting off the team bus, which I wasn't able to do at this game, but I was able to catch them having their pre-match walk around on the pitch, which usually consists of them walking out in a group, having a laugh, reading a programme, and maybe just looking at the pitch um, before going back in to get changed, ready to warm up. And again, this kind of content is great for clubs, for their social media channels before the games kick off. And again, just for that extra engagement on social. Okay, so this is as quite obviously you can see the teams coming out before the game ready for kickoff. Now this is usually around five minutes before the game kicks off. However, it was a little bit early, maybe a minute or so earlier than that today, just because the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II a few uh, a week a earlier meant that stuff. this game would be preceded by a minute silence and also the national anthem. Anyway, generally speaking, when teams come out, there's a chance to maybe grab a few shots. It's always a little bit hit and miss, especially if you're not familiar um, with the stadium you're shooting at or it's an away game. You don't always know what opportunity you'll get in terms of snapping some images when the teams come out. Um, I stayed on the side of the way dugout, which did at least guarantee me some decent shots of the manager of the team. I was photographing Tramia, as you can see him walking back towards us here. Um, there were some quite easy shots after he had applauded the fans. Also something else to look out for is the handshakes between the managers before the game. Very rarely will I use these shots, but you never know actually if anything happens during the game that might make this shot a little bit more useful later on or tell the story of the game a little bit better in some way later on to always snap the two managers when they shake hands before a game. 
onto the minute silence then these always present an opportunity to get some quite nice shots of teams either huddled together or at least lined up alongside each other always makes some nice social media wallpapers or whatever um, for clubs or, or whoever is going to use these images if you can get them face on do so try and be aware if there's minute silence that kept taking place to get in a position to allow you to get the best shot I have seen some photographers and I've tried it myself getting some shots from behind which is quite nice especially if the team you're following kind of all link arms and put their arms around each other's shoulders you can get some nice bits then um, obviously as well when these silences are taking place don't miss your opportunities to get more shots of the managers and the coaching teams kind of lined up for those minute silence as well. I guess a little bit of advice for maybe the young or the, the more inexperienced photographers when you're photographing minute silences in professional stadiums, um, don't feel awkward in doing so because it can feel actually really awkward the first few times you do it and everyone in the stadium is really, really silent and often looking at you if your shutter is clicking away. Get the shots you need as quick as you can and then you can fall silent along with everyone else. So here I am in position for the first half and I apologise, this is the only bit of match action that you're going to see. I don't want to jeopardise my channel or anything by showing a ton of match action from this game. So instead I'll show you kind of the positions of me um, sat there taking shots while sharing some of the images I got. As you may have noticed, I didn't have the GoPro running for the entire first half here, and I did miss the moment Tramway scored what turned out to be the only goal of the game in a 1 0 win. Um, I did have some focusing issues throughout the game, more on that at the very end of this video, but here's a few shots of this goal and the celebration. second half was pretty much a continuation of the first with Salford having most of the possession but Tramia certainly creating all of the goal scoring chances. I've got about 10 minutes of me, um, of footage of me just sat here taking photos through the game but I'm figuring you don't want to watch that so I'm just going to put some different shots I took of the game during the second half on screen now um, before we jump through to the celebrations at full time. Just one more thing before I do put some of those shots on, you'll see uh, in these last 30 seconds or so of footage, I have my laptop out and I'm continuing to look down to my left and work on my laptop. This is me basically ed reviewing images, editing them and sending them to the club during the game so that they can keep those social media feeds up to date. If you're working for an agency or a newspaper, it is likely you'll also be editing at pitch side and wiring images or sending images while the game is going on. Thank you. 
So full time, uh, finished Salford Nil Tramia One, which uh, for me is a perfect result being being Tramia's photographer. Um, some nice pictures at the end. Tramia have not won away this season; they've only won two games before today, uh, so that's the first away win. I think they've only won that's probably only the third or fourth away win of the calendar year. So um, I'll put some celebration shots on screen now. But when you see some of those, you'll you know that gives a bit of context as to why um, everyone was so thrilled with a, a one nil away win. Uh, Salford also in the top uh, seven, I think they're sixth now, um, so they're chasing the playoff. So great, great win for my team today. From a photography perspective, a uh, little bit frustrated, mainly because I thought my 1D Mark IV has had a focusing issue. Um, I've tried to calibrate it, I tried micro adjustments, I then bought a brand new lens, well, used but uh, new to me, Mark uh, 70 to 200 f2.8 Mark II. Thought that fixed it. Uh, the lens is tack sharp on any other body. But again today, um, if I zoom into any of these photos, you'll see the, the focus is just a little bit soft. Can't figure it out for the life of me. Um, so that might have to go off to Canon or or somewhere to get some love and see if we can fix that um, problem. But uh, so full time, I switched back my um, 70 to 200 onto my 80D, uh, Canon 80D. That was just to make sure I've got sharp picks of those celebrations at the end, which I'm, I'm quite happy with. Focus did slip on that a couple of times, but that's more because of the ATD not being the, the quickest to focus uh, like the 1Ds would be. So uh, all in all, good. The sun was really bright. Second half kind of backlighting the players or, or, or appearing to back, be backlit. So uh, that made it interesting. A few, few different types of shots there. Shooting into the sun is never ideal, but I think with sports, if you've got a uh, long lens and uh, what have you, and you're shooting kind of football and soccer, that's kind of uh, floor level, you, get away with it most of the time uh, all in all good day hope you found the video useful um if you have i'd love you to subscribe to the channel i'm closed in on a thousand subscribers now which is is really good and hopefully for an upcoming game i'll be able to give you a little bit more uh, detail and, and maybe get the recording right apologies the gopro uh, ran out of battery <laughs> midway through the second half there so um the full-time whistle we missed i'd also turned it off to try and preserve the battery just before we scored the goal um but in terms of what i'm doing there was nothing different going on to the rest of the game that you did see so uh, yeah all in all that is good look out for the uh, iphone 14 pro uh, camera review as well i took some stuff in this game uh, with that camera some great results a couple of questionable results as well so i'll, I'll pop that in but uh, yeah that's it see you soon on the next video